just bought a brand new Sega Genesis wireless controller that is branded by Sega and made by Retrobit. So was it worth it? Let's find out. Welcome to the poor man's retro game room. And you know, one of the things that uh, really attracted me to this uh, controller was the boomerang shape. And uh, boomerang shape with the six buttons. And um, you know, I love this, this bigger boomerang uh, Sega Genesis controller because uh, that was the first one I got. And uh, that's what I was used to. And of course, they, you know, Sega made a great six button controller. Absolutely perfect six button controller. Um, but this is cool, man. I mean, you get the six buttons, you get the best of both worlds. Now this is a this is the wireless model. You can actually get a cheaper one that just plugs right into your Sega Genesis. And uh, you know another cool thing about it is that it's brand new, so uh, no cleaning involved with this controller. <laughs> uh, and as you can see here, that it you know the presentation is excellent. Um, and I'm going to run the unboxing up you know while we're kind of discussing it, and I'm going through my review of this controller. Uh, but really good. Um, presentation in my opinion uh, but it's got a really nice little box that comes in and um, it comes with two different dongles one of them which is in my Sega Genesis right now plugs right into your Sega Genesis port um, and it's a cool looking dongle it doesn't take away from the aesthetics of the uh, console at all um, and then it also comes with the USB dongle um, and you can put this in your Switch or in the Sega Genesis Mini. Um, it does say that it, it works with other USB devices as well. And I haven't tested it on those. I tested it on the Sega Genesis Mini, the first one, not, not the second one. Um, and I tested it on my Switch. And there's some good and bad, honestly, using it in that mode. What I'm going to be using it for is my Sega Genesis, the original hardware. Um, now I will tell you that I almost returned it. I was I was coming really close, but uh, then I thought, you know what? Let's take a look at the manual because what my problem was is I could not get it to go into three button mode. I didn't. I was pressing the mode button as I booted the system up. Well, that doesn't work when you're using a dongle, so you're going to have to figure, you know, out uh, some different ways of doing that. But this comes with this instruction manual, and I don't know instruction paper, uh, not really a manual, but it does have some very good information in, the, in it. Um, so I went and I looked, you know, I'm like, man, how do I get this into three button mode? I wanted to play some Golden Axe 2, have to have a three button controller or a six button controller by, you know, you hold the mode button down while you boot the system. Um, so it has to have a three button mode. Uh, <clears throat> and I also wanted to uh, play some Sega CD games. And um, the six button, if this is in six button mode, it, you can't control it, um, I couldn't anyway, in the menu screen to pick a game and get started playing. It needs to be in three button mode. Um, works perfect on the 32X, of course, you know, and any, any um, games that don't require that three button mode on the Sega Genesis work perfectly. But, you know, if it's not going to work for all my games, then I was going to send it back. Well, I found out through the, reading the manual, go figure, um, if you hold your start button down and your B button down for like four seconds, it'll change the little indicator here. You can see that blinking red? It'll change to blue. And when it changes to the blue, um, it's in three button mode. Let's see if we can get it to do it. There we go. So you see that? Now it's in three button mode. Uh, these are like left and right, uh, you know, clickers, and um, I think you can use that as a mode for when you're in game. The mode button on certain games does, uh, you know, does do some things. It has function to it. Um, not very many, but uh, and honestly, I haven't tried that, but I, I'm sure that that's probably what it is. And then underneath the controller, you're going to have a um, a home button and a start button. So when you're playing it on a modern device like your Switch, you can hit that home button underneath here. And it's really cool. It's kind of hidden so you don't actually accidentally bump it or anything. 
but you hit that and it'll take you to the home screen. Same with the uh, Sega Genesis Mini, take you right to the home screen. So, uh, works perfect on the modern devices. Now, my only thing about it working on the modern devices is I have the actual game, the Sega Genesis Classics, downloaded on to my uh, Nintendo Switch. I do not have Nintendo Online, so I don't have the Sega collection from Nintendo on their online service. Well, I thought that, you know, I should be able to remap the buttons where this would work with my Sega Genesis Classic um, game. And, you know, it has several different Sega Genesis games, and I thought that'd be, you know, really cool. Well, you can't. Um, you remap the buttons. You can't remap the buttons on that particular game, but you can actually change the button layout to two different layouts that are predetermined. That doesn't work. So uh, it's really made to play that game with your um, Nintendo Switch controllers, your Pro Controller, or your Joy-Cons. Um, it's not, this didn't work. It doesn't work. I don't, that, that was kind of frustrating. Now, from what I do understand is that if you do have Nintendo Online and have the Sega games from <laughs> Nintendo, you can remap the buttons and it works perfectly, or you might not even need to remap them. It might just be set to it. I'm not sure, but um, I don't play that. I don't pay that premium to have Nintendo Online. So, um, so there's some ups and downs to it. The other one, the other downside, I would say, and it's really not that big a deal for me, um, but. When you're pairing the device, I followed the instructions, and after I paired it to my Sega Genesis, which the first time I paired it went really well. When I tried to change the pairing uh, to a modern device, to like the Switch, I actually had to get a uh, um, paper clip. There's a little tiny hole, you probably are not going to be able to see that. But you get the paper clip, and you actually you can reset the controller by pushing down on that button that's in, inside the controller itself so um, that's you know that's kind of a pain if you're gonna be switching back and forth it is kind of a pain I don't know if I'm doing something wrong I'm, I'm trying to follow the instructions exactly how to do that how to repair it with a different device um, but it's it's kind of a pain so I just keep a paper clip you know in that box and uh, if I'm gonna go ahead and hook this up to my mini for example I say just as mini then I'll I'll go ahead and uh, you know, reset the controller, and then it pairs fine. If you do that, it pairs fine with the other device. Um, so there's that. Uh, the first time pairing it went very smoothly. You just hold the button down on your um, little dongle until it flashes. You start your controller, and uh, it should find it and pair it up. Um, that's my experience, anyway. So this was $39, and I paid, I paid $39 from Amazon. It was Prime, so it got here really quick. Um, I can tell you that the D-pad is just, I love it. It works great. Um, this can work up to 30 feet away from your the dongle. So, it's just cool having a brand new Sega Genesis controller that doesn't have a you know cable attached to it. Um, and sometimes I'll run my Sega Genesis feed over to the Sony Trinitron. I put a cable that goes back behind there. And so I can just sit here and play it on this TV if I want to do that. My, consoles on the other side of the room so that's a really cool thing and you know it's just cool to have a modern um, but true to form factor <laughs> you know except they had to kind of widen that out to add the other three buttons but still very cool and it's branded Sega Genesis um, so you know here's the thing if, if you're gonna bounce back and forth you just kind of got to take take it into your mind before you actually purchase the product think about it a bit is it right for you this is right for me because I'm I, um, I love having it on my original hardware so I will be using it that way um, if you're gonna bounce back and forth between your mini and and your um, original hardware you know you might want to kind of take that for what it is if it is what it is you got to reset the controller um, you know I mean unless I'm doing something wrong I'm following the instructions exactly how you know I see them there so and then once once I was in you know able to pair it and I went into three button mode uh, it worked perfectly as a three button controller so that's a very big positive to me you can switch this on the fly and it just it just worked so very cool now of course once you get it paired um, you don't have to mess with it you know I just you start using the buttons and it turns on hit the start button 
and uh, fire up your console and it'll find it. You know, it works perfectly. So, good D-pad. Buttons feel, to me, they feel like the original six button. You know, it, it, they feel good. And the, the build quality, it's not heavy at all. Um, but it's not one of those, you know, really super light, cheap plastic type of things. It, it feels really good. It feels, the build quality feels good. And I've been using it now for four days. So I wanted to kind of really use it, test it on everything that I could. And uh, give you, you know, a good idea if this controller is right for you. So, all right. Well, I think that's about it. Um, yeah. I'm happy with it. I give this a, a big thumbs up. A big thumbs up for me. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope this uh, video added value and, uh, you know, had had some value to you. And, um, you know, hopefully it was informative and entertaining. So, <laughs> uh, let me know in the comments if you use any modern controllers with uh, your original consoles. Is that a thing or do you try to get the OEM controllers? Um, for a long time I've been using OEM controllers. That was the way to go. Um, this one is... And it's really great. It works perfectly. So. Alright, well thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.